up. Get ready. It's going to be a very, very intense journey. Begin. Hello, Internet. Welcome to episode 129 of Frameskip, a video game podcast with three friends. I'm your host tonight. My name is George, and I'm joined by the man who puts the hot in Atlanta, Austin. Austin, how's it going? Hey, I love it when you put it that way, George. That's right. I don't even live in Atlanta, but here we are. <laughs> I'm doing great. Thank you. I'm doing great. It feels good for, to be here. Thank you for immediately discrediting me uh, as soon as you got the microphone. <laughs> I appreciate that. But also joining me is someone who I think will be a little bit nicer, the man who puts... <laughs> The uh, steel in the Pittsburgh Steelers himself. Are you are you close to Pittsburgh? Wait, is it, we got Seth. We got Seth. Seth, how you doing? I am he's near, not. Near he's not. Pittsburgh. Philadelphia. Oh, I, thought, I, thought, I, thought, I thought you were from Western PA. I'm not from Western or Eastern PA. Oh, uh, the I'm other from one. The Central, Central PA. Central. Yeah. Central Pa. All right. The the you, real yeah. Pennsylvania. You could have said well, what do you he guys puts expect? The... It's only been it's only been seventy episodes. You think I should know you by now? Is that? <laughs> You could have said he puts the uh, set in sexy. I think that would have been that would have been good. That or he he puts the papa in pa. <laughs> That's a good one. I, I like, like that. I like that. The, the papa in pa. Yeah. Um. I'm doing pretty good, man. How are you? I'm excellent. I've been exercising a lot more. I've been waking up at like seven in the morning and walking like seven and a half miles a day. And um. I'm I'm very sore all over. I've got shin splints in places that aren't my shins. George, you're shin my... Shin splints are the worst. Oh, they are. You're my inspiration, George, because I, I really want to do that. I really want to start walking daily because I feel like I just have a very sedentary lifestyle. And, mm -hmm. um, hence why I purchased a standing desk and I'm standing now as I'm recording, which is a, a nice change. So... Oh, that's great. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I, my dad, I, my dad honest, says... I've never wanted one of them. Ever. Uh, not one time. Yeah. They're great. Uh, it's great. It's fantastic. So many offices I've had use them. They're they're great. Yeah. Because it's always like whenever you're like in a public setting and you like set it up, like make it go up, everyone's like, oh shit, this guy means business. He's <laughs> about the, to do some of the best. It's the work new of his age career. rolling up the, the sleeves. Exactly. Push yeah. up the desk. <laughs> no, my dad says that uh sitting is the new smoking. He's read that in multiple places. Interesting. Which I don't think it's nearly as bad for you as smoking is. And I, but I, I do both quite a bit. So yeah, walking, walking for health, walking for fun. Austin, I, how about you just like let, out, let go of your apartment and go live on a farm and become that guy. That, that I like that. There in exercise. Yeah. I like you that. Start milking some cows in the morning. Yeah. Get that iron bale hay or whatever the hell else farmers just do. Just pluck some corn. Yeah. I well, I don't you know joke. what farmers do. You joke. The amount of times <laughs> I've like I would like a group chat with like all my advertising buddies, and we're always like, "Why do we do this? Let's just quit." Like we all have some money. Let's just let's just buy a farm. Let's just let's just do something meaningful with our lives. Well, that's not really that meaningful. Um, because you know what, George? At some point, someone's got to scrape up the cow shit, and then you're questioning, oh, "Why am I doing this as well?" We weren't going to do a cow farm. I was going to do a, a certain type of farm. I was going to say what kind. Oh, okay. Seth, I've never... At some point, someone's got to spread manure. I've never That's asked you this, point. Seth. Is your job active, like, physically? Like, do you... Is it intense on a physical front? Or is it more so just yeah. you rely on the machines? Okay. Um. Well, so, like, the machines get... Ex you wouldn't believe it, but, like, yeah. making paper is exceptionally dirty. It's right. disgusting. So the machines have to get constantly cleaned. Yeah. And um, there's, the, the, it's not really accurate to call it a paper machine. It's more of a paper dryer, right? And um, because it's a dryer, it's a, it's a football field size machine, and it is constantly over 100 degrees with 100% humidity all the way around it. So climbing up that bad boy up and down is not fun. Thankfully, though, now that I've been promoted, I make other people do it for me 99% of the time. Yeah, that's great. So, yeah. Make them... Also, make does, them it, does it smell nice. bad? Um, Most paper mills do. Ours doesn't because we, we flush our drains out all the time constantly really well. But, like, 99% of other paper mills, you walk in there and it smells awful. Because the, the town in... 
There's a town in Maine called Rumford, and every time we drive by it, we always call it Bumford because it smells like butt because of the paper mill. Yeah, because believe it or not, paper rots. It's yeah, like, it's like trees do, but you know, you get it wet and you just let it sit, it will rot, and massive amounts of it smells awful. That's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I'm host, and tonight I get to make all of that's what she said jokes I want. Austin, what have you been doing lately? George, I have been playing the hit online MMO Final Fantasy XIV, which is celebrating its 10th anniversary this year. And wow, yeah, isn't that crazy? We were <laughs> we were there day one. We, we were, were day we one. were. I still have my original copy. Yeah. So I, um, Seth and I talked about this a couple episodes ago. We were we had that big kind of Final Fantasy XVI discussion as we had both gotten further in the game. And toward the tail end of that conversation, I said. You know, we were talking a lot about Final Fantasy XII and some of the correlation between 16 and 14. I said in there at the end, well, man, now I want to go play 14. And I did. <laughs> I don't know if that was the right decision because I still have not beat 16. I am exactly, Seth, at that part that you mentioned two episodes ago where you have to build the, um, let's, I guess, the ship. I, I don't think that's really that big of a spoiler so it's not because it doesn't matter it doesn't matter <laughs> and it frankly it sucks <laughs> frankly it sucks yeah. so yeah. i i got to that point and was like man i'm i'm still enjoying this but this just is not vibing with me right now i just want to play 14 so i bought a uh, a month of, of 14 and have just jumped straight in i have just beat the heaven's word expansion as of last night and oh you know, been doing the duty roulettes and like just getting back in, into that world. And God, man, that game is, I don't know what it is, but that is like a, a top five game for me of all time. And it, and it has been for years, ever since I played it, you know, back on the PS3 when it first launched. And um, it's just so well, easy to jump back in and love that game. Imagine this. It's a top five game for you and you've only played the worst part of it. I know. I know. The game I'm continuously so gets better as you go deeper in. So yeah. you got a lot to be excited for, man. The main city in Stormblood is one of the most beautiful video game cities I've ever seen. Yeah. And um it's really fun to walk around in. Um the story is phenomenal. Now, I, I haven't so I started playing Endwalker as well recently. Yeah. And I haven't uh I haven't gotten too far into it but so far the story hasn't grabbed me as much in endwalker as it did shadowbringers but you got a lot to look forward to man seriously i wish you would get into it george i tried i think i put like 15 hours into it yeah and i don't think i got past like the baby's first mmo steps and i think i would get interested into it but man does that just take a long time and i know i need to do it because i've never really played an mmo Austin, i assume you played more final fantasy 15 14 than uh than destiny right oh yeah absolutely i I've, I've played okay, so... probably about 500 hours of 14 okay so it was just easier for you to jump in after not touching it for a minute yeah. and figure figure out what you're supposed to do yeah it's it's um it, it's still been a challenge because my main class that i use is black mage which is kind of technical i mean all the all the classes in that game are technical because it's an mmo but Black Mage in particular just has a lot that it uses. Uh, I know the casters do uh, have pretty complicated uh, to use an MMO term of rotation, which is essentially like the moves that you should be using in an exact order to maximize damage. Mm -hmm. And um, I, frankly, I haven't played the game in like four or five years. And for the most part, like I jumped right in and without even watching a video, like 90% of it all came back to me, which was good. I was kind of surprised by that because the game is very complicated. And I think that's probably the hardest part for somebody just starting off is if you're new to MMOs or if you don't have a group of people you're jumping in with and they're, you know, kind of showing you the ropes. It's a very hard game to get into it at first, I would say. Mm -hmm. But it's excellent. I feel though. It, it's just a lot of stuff I was doing at the beginning. Like, I think I tried it last spring, last fall. Yeah. Not not exceptionally long ago, but it was just like yeah. nothing I'm doing feels important, and like I don't even to the point where like I don't even know if I'm doing the right thing or if I just found some side quest. Like I can't tell what the main quest is. I can't well tell what I'm building towards. And like I chose like an archer class, so like the combat wasn't extremely involved because like you're you know just 
doing stuff from a distance. Yeah. And so, like, because of that, I was just like, oh, I probably didn't choose the right thing for to, to get me engaged right off the bat with something I'm still new to. The, the thing that I think 14 does exceptionally well, because it's interesting because it does it exceptionally well when you look back on it, but when you're doing it at the time, it feels awful, is you start out as, like, a bottom-of-the-barrel adventurer in 14 and you're going around and doing these things like you said like that seem like they're not important whatsoever and by the end of the first i don't know content area you're like you're slaying gigantic robots and stuff like that um and then you know by the end of heaven's ward you're slaying massive like legendary dragons and um and in Stormblood, like, well, you know, it goes on and on and on until like you're fighting gods and, and, and whatnot. But your character progresses in power until like in Endwalker right now is like, they're, you're like, you're the hero of, you know, Eorzea and whatever. Um, but when you're playing at the time in these early levels, you're like, man, what is this? This is awful. Yeah. Which is where I think the Final Fantasy fourteen community really carries those early levels because, dude, you can't talk about the pros of Final Fantasy fourteen without talking about how good the community is. They're just the most welcoming, fun community that loves people, and they love people to try their game out. I mean, there, mm. there's a reason that meme exists. Like, oh, have you heard of the critically acclaimed MMO Final Fantasy 14 uh, Shadowbringers with a 500 hour content, but I'm sure you guys have seen it, right? Um, yeah. yep. they, they have that massive free trial, but I can't recommend it enough to people, man. Like, like it is, it is daunting and intimidating, but you really should try and jump in and get your feet wet because, especially, like, dude, Final Fantasy 14 carried me through like a really dark time in my life, a really, really painful dark time. Yeah. And it's that type of game that you can do that with where it's it's really fun to get lost in a world, be social, interact with all these people that are really fun and just love, love the game. Dude, there is people in this game that go AFK in the, one of the cities and they have their character just standing static in, this, in the city. The thing is, though, they're not actually AFK. They're standing there just vibing in the world. <laughs> like they're still at their computer, just like talking to each other and stuff. Yeah. But it's it's almost like like a like a chat room where they're just all standing there. And people like like there's a class called the Bard, right? And you can actually play instruments. And these people will set up multiple accounts and take all these characters to a spot in the main city and they'll play music. With multiple characters. I don't know how they pull it off, but they have like a whole band with different instruments and they'll actually play music and people will gather around them and watch and whatnot. Crazy stuff like this happens in Final Fantasy 14 every day. It's the craziest MMO I've ever played. And I played a lot of MMOs. Yeah. It's it's a very social game. It's it's a game that for me, you're right, Seth, like um it, it carried me through a dark place in in my life too when it first came out and you know, going through Heaven's Word initially. Uh, the first ninety percent of it, at least, was a pretty rough time for me, and just on a personal level. And that the game really makes you feel connected to the world, which is mm -hmm. nice for a video game. Like, you know, I haven't been playing with anybody. I haven't, Seth. I know you're jumping back into it, and I know we'll play. But this past couple of weeks, I have not played with anybody from my friends, but I still feel so interconnected with that world because, like, for example. I jumped on and within the first like hour of me, you know, renewing my subscription and jumping back into that world, some guy messaged me just out of the blue and was like, Hey man, saw you had the, the novice uh, thing, which George, if you're like starting off playing for the first time, there will be like a little leaf that's beside your name. That's supposed to indicate like, Hey, this is a new player. So they're probably mm -hmm. not well-versed on the world. Help them where you can is basically what the, the community reads it as. And immediately it gives you that as well if you've been gone for a while. So, go ahead. So, sorry, time out. Is there like incentive on the game for these people to help newcomers, or is this like literally just they've fostered this amazing community of people who just that's what are it is. It's, a, it's that. Giving. Okay. 
it's that and there i guess there is a little bit of incentive for the like dungeons essentially because you you can actually get like currency and stuff for doing lower level dungeons if you're a higher level player but mm -hmm. from a social standpoint no it's like totally just the way the community is but mm -hmm. to finish what i was saying though like i jumped on immediately and got a, a message from somebody just like you get the novice leaf you get a leaf if you've been gone for a while to indicate like hey this person's probably rusty like help them where you can and i got a message immediately and was like hey you want to join my guild we've got like 400 people um this is casual looking to just have some some you know friendly helpers that can help out newcomers and people rejoining and i joined and it's it's been great like having people to help me out and answer my questions so <laughs> that's awesome yeah it's it's crazy because having that little like novice leaf in almost any other mmo game you can think of no one would want to party with you no one would want to like play with you at all because like for instance world of warcraft the community is generally viewed as equate toxic and intimidating but in final fantasy 14 there's none of that man none like you the, the the party wipes because you uh missed your heals or, or you lost aggro as a tank or whatever and they're like all right let's you know, jump back in let's do it again well, maybe they might send you some tips or something like that and and uh there's really no i mean i've had very few bad encounters with, with people in final fantasy 14 they just generally are people that love their game dude when i play destiny i feel like a younger brother you know who's just like not old enough to like go to a party and just like oh shit you guys are you guys are doing a raid this weekend like i'd love to join they're like what light level are you i was like oh yeah. they're, they're like sorry man like can't carry you it's like oh all right <laughs> sick guess i'll just um uh hang out in the tower i guess you know i'll just um, go back to doing my peasant activities trying to get my item level up yeah uh, so seth is uh final fantasy 14 what you've been playing as well i beat final fantasy 16 a couple of days ago nice um really enjoyed it too long game's too long i i, I will say that um and that's partially my fault i i guess because of me doing every side quest in the game but also what i will say is the side quests at the final two chapters are vital to the story and um and understanding like what you're fighting for it's a, it's a really good wrap up to all the companions and um and, and whatnot that you've gathered along along the way mm -hmm um but i just didn't see a need for this game to be like 60 hours long um i love i loved it though i think you know clive is probably my favorite final fantasy protagonist at this point i think um you know jill and torgol are really really phenomenal characters i don't understand what kotaku was really talking about i mean at this point i think we can all agree to kotaku just puts out nonsense to make people hate click him but um yeah, I think I think Jill's a phenomenal character. I really loved the more mature um themes and tone of the story. And yeah, man, I really recommend Final Fantasy 16 to, to pretty much anybody. I, what I will say is just just play it at your own pace. There's no rush. Um there is a lot of content there. The game could have been maybe 10 to 20% more difficult in my opinion because at at a certain point um, I, I know me and Austin talked about this. I was just running past every every you know minor encounter because I had no reason to, to fight them. Yeah. Um, I'm but, at that yeah. now. Like I'm level 29, and if I see anything below level 20, I'm like I'm just gonna skirt past you. No, nothing yeah. to do here. Um, what I will say though, Creative Business Unit Three it did such a phenomenal job in the cinematic and in the cinematic experiences with this game and it is some of the most crazy cutscenes that that I've ever seen it, it was like it was like I was watching like an anime or something like that i mean like the scenes and and the way they animated them with especially with like the, the boss battles and the, the um icons absolutely insane i mean some of the, some of the craziest things i've ever seen in my life came from this game and the, props to them the cutscenes around the titan fight mm -hmm. in particular are just 
astounding. Like it's uh, the scale of that game is so so good. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's they they accomplished something really phenomenal with Final Fantasy 16 and you know what? I hope they make DLC for it. I I was I was on board with them being like no, it's a wrapped up nice package. We're not going to make any DLC, but after I beat it I'm like there's there's a few areas and and chapters of the story that could use a DLC um package to to really enhance the storytelling of the world and so at least a fishing mini game for god's sake come on there you go a fishing mini game but uh yeah i uh pretty much just been playing that i beat that a couple days ago and i immediately booted up final fantasy 14 one thing i was not prepared for this time around final fantasy 14 was the steam deck because let me tell you what that is a problem because i can take that steam deck anywhere turn on my mobile hotspot with my phone and I've got final fantasy 14 on the go. And, uh, that's a problem. <laughs> uh, I, cause I can play it literally anywhere now. And before you were limited to playing it, you know, wherever you, you had Wi-Fi and your consoles or, or whatnot, but it plays phenomenal on the steam deck. And I've just been chilling on the couch going through the, uh, the main story of end Walker. Um, so my, my issue though, Austin, is that when I started, I've always had a thing for like um, playing the featured class that the expansions were yeah. showing off, right? So like Shadow Shadowbringers, they you know were featuring the Dark Knight, so I was playing the Dark Knight and Endwalker. They had the you know they're featuring the Gladiator or the Paladin, so I was like, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a Paladin this time. So I switched to Paladin. Was just starting to learn it when I took a break, and now. I'm like, mm, there's too many abilities here. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> so it's been like a learning curve trying to get back into learning how to play Paladin. But yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to play together with, you know, uh, me, me and you yeah. getting back in there, getting the old team back together. That's how we started. It was, it was me and you. Back in the day, man. I think Eric played with us. We had a few people playing with us. Well, I, I think Eric may have played like the first day. I know yeah. him and Scott bought it, but yeah. they could the launch of A Realm Reborn was such a mess. It was. It was disastrous, um, actually. Yeah. yeah I, they, I remember just... reading those I was living in England when that game came out, and so like I didn't have a lot of games with me. I think I had like a DS and like a PSP. But I was you know, I was drinking a lot, I was partying a lot, I was in England, I was yeah. nineteen or twenty, you know, I was but like my big connection to video games was just like IGN and just like Rima News and like man like the review of that game like it didn't read like a review it read like an obituary like it, it just seemed like it was like literally dead on arrival when it came out Dude. I cannot believe this is the same game and they figured out like an in canon event to explain like why it was so dookie when it first came out and Dude. why it's so incredible now watch Danny O'Dwyer's documentary the the, the six so part good. documentary it is one of the not not just like it's not just a good video game documentary, right? It's a fucking, it's one of the best documentaries I've worked in my whole life. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I had the same issue though, Seth, to go back to the classes for a second. Cause I tried to go back to my white mage. I have like a level 50 white mage that I was leveling up when Andy and I were going through the story. And I just, <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> I've got it's hard. It's hard to go back. But Black Mage is my muscle memory because that was my original class, so I'm just I'm sticking with that one for now. Yeah, yeah Black it's... Mage is a is a is a good is a cool class because you're just casting massive like mm -hmm. balls of fire and whatnot. It's so good. If you guys if you guys pick a time and if you guys pick a day, and if that time and that day don't coincide with any major NFL game coming up in the next couple months, so like Sundays are kind of out for me. Thursdays usually out. Monday technically out but I, I could be persuaded for mondays like i'll i'll dip my toes back into this game if you I don't even, i've been playing every day you just, dropped, the, <laughs> you just dropped the most complicated schedule possible <laughs> so i can't do thursdays no, after 3 30 but before 5 15 p.m <laughs> well and... no like i assume i assume we'd be playing at night yeah right and so if we want to do, because like we all alternate our days between Tuesday and Wednesday for recording. If we want to do the opposite night, well, then Seth can't play. Fuck. Um, 
All right, we'll we'll take this chat offline. We'll we'll, we'll do the logistics. We'll but I I'm I'm willing to be convinced. Like I am willing. I am so head over heels in love with Final Fantasy 16. Dude, I told you guys this was JRPG summer. If you like 16, you're gonna love 14. If you really get into it, because 16 is seriously to me feels like an extension of 14. Like yeah, I'm, I would agree with that. There are just so many systems in that game, and even like I realize this, Seth, a lot of the lore and stuff in the game is very similar, which I kind of forgot about. Like, yeah, they share they share similar like uh, themes. Yeah, well, without spoiling, like Iceheart in fourteen, like how that all works out is so similar to Primals and stuff in mm -hmm. sixteen, which I would never even considered. So, right, it's really fascinating. One of the best video game songs of all time, by the way. Dude, is that I've listened like... to that like six times this morning. So good. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I played a little Final Fantasy 16 last night, and I got to the first Koopka fight. Nice. And, uh, That's a good yeah, one. I, it's fantastic. I finally heard the music from the commercials, and I was like crying while I was playing it. I'm like, this is so pretty. <laughs> this yeah. is just like such a beautiful moment. And I thought Jill was going to get the axe. Whew. Then Torgal went Super Saiyan. I don't care. This game came out a month ago, and I'm so far behind <laughs> everyone. So I, I can talk about it. What a game. What a freaking game, you guys. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, just it, it's, it's almost hard to talk about it because of how crazy it gets, right? Like It's yeah. hard to come up with words to describe it, but that first Koopka fight where you're like, all right, buddy, like it's time to go now. Like mm -hmm. You're going down. And then the way it ends, it's like, Whoa. dude, the ending is so good in that fight. It is so yeah. good. <laughs> I agree. Phenomenal. I'm a little pissed about how it ended, but I mean, whatever. It's fine. It's fine. Um, don't have to get into it. Uh, I have not really been playing games. I've been playing a little bit of one game, but I'm going to save that for a second. I've been rereading a lot of comics. I'm guesting on a friend's show called Digging for Kryptonite this Friday. We are recording and we're talking about Infinite Crisis, which is one of my favorite events of all time for comic books. And I started thinking about this, and so I, I just wanted to like pull your guys in for your opinions about, uh, I, I guess, preference. I've always considered myself a Marvel guy. Like, I host a comic book show, Short Box Summer, you can check it out, that's pretty much just about mid-2000s Marvel books. Now, that said, I currently think Marvel's amazing right now. I'm, like, a really big fan of pretty much all the books that are coming out. I'm not a fan of all the decisions they're making, but like I, I generally enjoy a book I, I read these days with the Marvel logo on it. DC, I'm a little bit more ambivalent on, but I'm rereading these books and like I think they are flawless. I, I think these are like perfect event books, and the way everything's set up, the way everything's laid out, I'm just I could not be having more fun than I am rereading this 50, 60 book run to talk about on a podcast for two hours on Friday. I'm very excited. So I wanted to ask you guys, do you feel like you're more critical of things you care about or are you more forgiving of things you care about? Just just out of curiosity, because like, like I said, I consider myself a Marvel guy. I'm a big Marvel fan. I'm just like, no, this era is excellent. Whereas now I'm like DC and eh, I'm a little, a little not sold on the current DC direction. I always thought that was because I just cared less about DC, but I'm wondering if it's because I care more about it. So just in terms of you guys, how do you operate? Um... That's an interesting question. I can tell you immediately my gut reaction is that I am way more forgiving of things I care about. And I'm, I'm willing to look past things that I don't like um, for things I care about. And that, that's, that's almost, to, almost to a fault, right? Um, if I'm immediately going into something being like, ah, I don't really like this or care about this. I'm, I can be super negative about it. 100%. Mm -hmm. um, but it it is an interesting phenomenon because the way you approach something definitely changes the way you see it overall. I, mean, that's, um, I can that's, tell that's you science, right? Like the act of observing something changes the outcome, right? I can tell you I thought for a long time that Spider Man the other was one of the best Spider Man stories of all time. And then I reread it a couple of years ago and I'm like, hmm it kinda sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I reread that for short box summary thinking it sucked the first time I read it. Not bad. I think it's like a solid, it's, solid C, solid C plus. We expect it's more okay. out, of, out of Spidey. Yeah. I remember being like an early teenager reading it and I'm like, yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> the spider then, totem. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then I reread it like, like, like a couple years ago and I'm like, I don't really know that I mean, this is, this is as good as I remember it. 
Dude, that's literally the point of my podcast. I, I think the line <laughs> I use is like to figure out if these books were good or if I was 15. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, what I will say, though, is a book that did not do that was Batman Hush, which is my favorite Batman story of all time. Um, I still when I first read that, I thought it was phenomenal. And when I read it today, I try to I usually read it like once a year. Um, it is just some of the some of the, the the best Batman I think you can possibly get. I love Hush. I have five hours of podcast with me and my buddy Richard, literally shitting all over that book. <laughs> I think that book fucking sucks. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh my god. <laughs> opinions wow. baby that's what's cool everyone's got a different one so i think i'm actually i'm probably in agreement <laughs> here with seth <laughs> sorry if you're listening seth looks miserable right now yeah. seth looks like i just I'm hit gonna, him with a car he's just like a b- betrayed out of you. <laughs> yeah. seth just took out his, his replica death note and wrote george in it oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um I think I'm in agreement with you, Seth, that I'm I am much more forgiving on things that I care about. So an example, obviously, I think everybody that that listens at this point probably knows I'm a pretty big MCU fan. Like I I've, I've seen it all. I don't think I missed anything from the MCU, including the TV shows. And you know, everybody. I think I talked about this a little bit last week, but everybody has been absolutely crapping on uh, Secret Invasion and the the Disney Plus show. And to be fair, I thought it was like fine i didn't think it was good necessarily or great but i thought it was fine but everybody out there is like this is the worst thing ever and i think it's fine the the ending was pretty Mm. pretty abysmal but um i think with mcu stuff in particular and then i'd say interestingly enough though although this is a little different i've been more critical you know zelda is one of my favorite series but tears of the kingdom i've been really critical of so i don't know I don't know. Maybe it just depends on the franchise for me or something. How about Star Wars? Because I know, like, you and I, yeah, the, all, all of you and I, and, and Coach, you know, like, we always get into, after we finish recording, we immediately talk about Star Wars <laughs> for, like, at least 25 minutes, usually. I'm pretty forgiving with Star episode. Wars, to be honest with you. Like, I, um, I know we had that whole discussion about Boba Fett and about how, like, I thought it was okay. I didn't think it was bad, though, or anything. And I would... Mm-hmm. I would actually go that far with every movie that's released. I don't think there's been necessarily a bad movie. I think I've enjoyed all of them. They just are of varying quality. quality yeah. So I'm I'm pretty bad, forgiving. Bad, I would say I would say bad Star Wars movie, right? Like I've I've enjoyed yeah. it myself at all of them. Yeah. But as far as like you know Star Wars movie, I would say like the sequel trilogy were, were bad Star Wars movies. Yeah. But um. I, I don't know where I fall on, on the Star Wars side. I think I fall on the I'm generally more positive because the insane negativity from the fandom frustrates me so much. Yeah. Yeah. Um that I just I'm like, man, I, 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 these guys annoy me to the point where I'm like unconsciously disagreeing with them. <laughs> <laughs> but like I watched all of Kenobi and I was like, yeah, there's some lame moments, but I thought it was a pretty phenomenal show. Yeah, I agree. Um, I watched Book of Boba Fett thinking that it was pretty much useless and it was a setup for the Mandalorian season three. But then I watched the Mandalorian season three and I'm like, eh, it was okay. <laughs> so I'm not really sure where I fall in Star Wars. I, I think I'm, I'm maybe somewhere in the middle. Um, I try to be as fair as possible. I can say that, you know? Mm-hmm. But, yeah. I was just curious what 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 y'all's temperature was. Seth is like, the I, world's I think... only objective Star Wars fan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Congratulations, bud. That's quite the title. <laughs> like, I think I might like this era of DC more. So I'm like, wait, why am I doing a Marvel podcast if I'm enjoying this Infinite Crisis shit so much? But what year was <sighs> Infinite Crisis? Oh five to oh six, into oh seven, was... I think. I think it was delayed. Like the countdown stuff was all 05 and then wow. Infinite Crisis was 2006 to 2007. And wasn't in, wasn't New 52 like 2010? 2011, I think. They rebooted twice that fast back then? Infinite Crisis wasn't a reboot. It wasn't? No. Oh. It like reintroduced it reintroduced the multiverse after 20 years of it being away. Oh, okay. I do know what this is now. Yeah. 
Mm. But um, let's see, for games, I've been playing, like I said, Final Fantasy 16. That game's excellent. I will burn through it as quickly as I can. So, Seth, we can have like a spoiler episode. Austin sounds like it fell to your back burner. Yeah, for now, I, I do want to go back to it. Um, I may, I may kind of you gotta do that, and we got to do Jedi Survivor too. Those games are so good. Those games, both those games. What what a summer for gaming! Just we got to play that, out. and we got to play Diablo three, Diablo four still too. I shit. forgot about that. Jedi Survivor is phenomenal. Yeah, I forgot. I still, I forgot I had Diablo four despite playing it for over fifteen hours. Yeah. That game fell off pretty quick for me. I think it's just because so much other stuff was coming out. I don't think it was a matter of the quality of that game. It was more so just when sixteen came out. It came out like, a week well... before Tears. <laughs> <laughs> then it came. It came out like three weeks before Final Fantasy sixteen, and like one week before Tears of the Kingdom, or one week after Tears of the Kingdom. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was in a bad, bad sandwich between it those was. two highly anticipated games. Um. No, what I've been playing on the side is Siphon Filter Logan Shadow, the uh, the PSP game that mm-hmm. is remastered, I guess, technically, or like repurposed for, for console play. And it made me think, I love those games so much on PSP when they were coming out. You know, those games play like dog shit on a controller. I remember even thinking at the time, like, man, this game would be so much better with a controller. And uh, no, it's just not. And I think part of the reason is we just have different expectations for handheld games than we do for console games. And so playing a handheld game on a console feels like shit. And I bring that up because there were rumors of a Switch 2 being released this year, next year, within the next calendar year. What a transition. And that is that is our main topic of the show today, talking about what we want out of a Switch 2 and I gotta be honest, my stuff is really boring. My stuff is mostly UI based. I want the shop to stop being unbearable to look through. I need there to not be 980 things on sale every week so that I might actually consider buying something on sale. So this is actually a good point. I have wanted that for a while. I, okay, I'm I'm not as bothered by the amount of things on sale. What I'm more bothered by is the total lack of filtering options at all uh, for, for the sales. The interesting thing there, George, is if you go on the Nintendo eShop website, it actually sorts them out by like, um, you know, let's just say Bethesda is doing a big, which I think they are right now, a big blowout sale for uh, QuakeCon or whatever it is. It will group those games together and have a little graphic that says like Bethesda QuakeCon sale and all those games will be in a cluster on the eShop Mm -hmm. website. But then for some reason on the eShop itself on the Switch, it's just like sales. All right, there they are. And it's a thousand games just in a random order. <laughs> Unbelievable. That That's my number one. Um, I like that. Austin, do you, do, you, do you have a, you said a video game chronicle? Yes. So web- website link. I do. Us? I do. So I'll, I'll just kind of read it off quick. Uh, for those who were unaware, basically like George said, this was um something that video games chronicles sources kind of leaked to them and and i would say video games chronicles pretty trustworthy they they've leaked some pretty big stuff in the past Um, but basically they had a source that came out and said that um nintendo is likely to release their their successor to the switch not necessarily a switch 2 but whatever their next system is uh during the second half of 2024 and the the article claims they're they're holding it till later in the year because they want to avoid any sort of shortages like PS5 and Series X had when those came out. So I would assume that this thing is basically like done in that case and they're just taking some time to, you know, manufacture them and get them ready to go so that there's not a a, a Wii or, you know, like I said PS5 Series X situation. But the one thing I will say that they did come out here and um and said well two things i should say they made it sound as though they didn't give specific details but they made it sound as though it would be similar to the switch you know something that is portable and and um dockable at the same time and then the only other piece of information here is that they said it would include a lcd screen not an oled uh like the oled switch model probably to um save some money for you know, just the overall MSRP. It'll have more memory, so storage, you know, because all the the new games are taking more and more storage. And then finally, it said it will accept uh, physical games via a cartridge slot. And that is all their source told them. So 
Kind of interesting. Kind of interesting. So right off the bat, do you think it's going to accept Switch cartridges? Do you think it's going to be backwards compatible? That's a big question. I hope to God. I hope to God. If they do another um, successor console that is not backwards compatible, you know, we Nintendo loves to mix things up, but I think now they have found what they need to stick with, frankly. And it sounds like they're mm-hmm. going that direction with something that's dockable and portable. Like it sounds like it's going to be a Switch successor by all means. So I would hope to God that the thing is freaking backwards compatible because that library is huge. I mean, there are still tons yeah. of Switch games coming out. I think it'd be a massive blunder to restart that system again, which Nintendo has done over and over and over again throughout the years. Repeatedly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Seth, you've sold and bought and sold and bought more Switches than any person I know. How interested are you in Nintendo's next-gen console? Um, I don't know. They got to sell me on it, right? Like, I'm not a Mario guy. I'm not a Smash Brothers guy. I'm not a Mario Kart. I'm not a Mario Party. Uh, I, don't, I don't like any of the Nintendo mainstays pretty much except Monster Hunter. And, Xen- and Xenoblade. And Xenoblade. Yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, I guess Xenoblade. Well, Xenoblade's more like a bandai property they just nintendo pub like nintendo has like exclusive publishing rights or something like that i don't know um but they're gonna have to sell me on it because i don't know i i don't play my switch very often i i, I like pokemon um but pokemon's been extremely disappointing lately <laughs> uh I, I think scarlet and violet were good games that n- Maybe we're held back by the power of the Switch, but also it's like other games don't look like that. Um, I don't know. I would like this to be a significant step up in power. I feel like the Nintendo has been kind of spinning their wheels in the um, power department since the Wii. And there's just no real reason for it. Um, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I, I would like this to be uh, something more similar to the Steam Deck, I guess. That, that's all I really got to say about it. Because I think we all, we all know what, what kind of games we're going to get from a Nintendo console. It's just going to be, you know, the yeah. the way we play them. I, I don't see this as being one of their um, massively, like, giant step-ups in the way we play games. Yeah. Um, by the way, just because you brought this up and I was curious, I went and looked up who owns the Xenoblade um, IP. Nintendo actually owns it. So Is they, it really? They do. And it seems like, oddly enough, I didn't know this, Xenogears, Xenosaga, and Xenoblade are all owned by separate companies. So Xenogears is still owned by Square Enix. Xenosaga is still owned good. by Bandai. Yeah. And Xenoblade is owned by Nintendo, which is mm. not, oh, I, I not watched how it a... works. I watched like a two hour documentary breaking down every single game in the Xeno yeah. line of games. And Jesus Christ, like what a nightmare to keep up with all that <laughs> stuff, man. I don't know how that person did it and like made it make sense. The oh, only man. the only connecting thread between them all is Tetsuya Takahashi, who's been trying to make the same story for twenty five years or something like that. I thought um, I really thought Bandai still owned it. That's interesting. Yeah. So I do agree that I definitely, I mean, obviously, if it's a new console, it, it, it should have a step up in power. I just, my concern is if they put it on par with, let's just say something close to the PS5, I know that that's going to be expensive. And I know that that is not what Nintendo has rolled with from a company, you know, uh, standpoint throughout the years. They've, they've been more of the discount system. So... I, I wish they would do that, but I don't know that they will, to be honest with you. I, I know that, that there was a leak maybe a couple months ago that we had talked about over text that claimed that it would be more in line with the PS4 and um, Xbox One power, which, I mean, I think is fine. I'm not super opposed to it. What's the What's the Steam Deck compared to? I don't know. I think it's in between yeah, like the PS4 and PS5. Um... It can play certain PS5 quality games, um, albeit at low settings, but like it can play Hogwarts Legacy. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know exactly where it falls in the power scale. I would assume at least at the, like the PS4 level, but I'm not positive. Gotcha. I mean, is that 
it, it's tough because like we know that's good enough for Nintendo games, right? Like Nintendo doesn't make necessarily beefy games. They are very creative, not just in terms of art direction, all that, but in like maximizing the potential of their hardware, right? Like uh, Pokemon aside, um, <laughs> as as said as said by Seth. But like yeah. I don't know, like there's nothing about like the upcoming Mario game, whatever it's called. I can't remember. Not the RPG, the other one. Oh, uh, Wonder. The new two D scroller. Wonder. Wonder. There's nothing about that that looks like terribly taxing or demanding on consoles, but like, goddamn, do I want to play? Like, it, it really does get like the Nintendo seal of, uh, just not not even approval, but like the Nintendo seal of like, yeah, it gets a free pass. Nintendo seal of free pass. Let's call it that. Like, they don't need power to make successful games, but the third party, like, that's where, that's where they do. Well, but, like, if if the console sells the amount of consoles that uh, that Switch did, then like, does that even matter? Like, if the if the pool of potential customers is that big. It, I, I would say yes, because they're self-sabotaging at this point. Like the, <laughs> the latest games that have come out from, uh, what is that? I had a bug on my camera that kept like walking across the, <laughs> <laughs> the, um, the, the lens. Sorry about that. You wanted to be on the, the podcast. Latest, yeah. The latest biggest games for Nintendo have been so clearly held back by the power of the switch. Um, Tears of the kingdom. If you run it on an emulator, you can run it better than the Switch on a Steam Deck. Same with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And I think that's like pretty insulting for someone that has a Nintendo Switch, right? Like these these people should be able to play these games at a decent fidelity at least. And Scarlet and Violet's case, especially, is like, man, that game is ugly. That yeah. looks like a smashed bag of assholes. And <laughs> and Good way of putting it. I, there's really no, there's really no excuse for it. Uh, the the terrain looks like something ripped straight out of like the N64 era, and it's just, it's not acceptable in today's environment. And oh, then, but this is this is a discussion we've been having for 20 years though. Like, oh man, Grand Theft Auto 3 looks so good on PlayStation 2. It's like, dude, you think that looks good? You should see it on PC. Like that, like that is just what the conversations. Been <laughs> yeah, but it's not for, a multi plat Well. I'll say this too about Pokemon. I mean, I'm sure it looks better on PC, but I still think that was like a developer issue. Or, I mean, I would agree. You look at Tears of the Kingdom versus that game, which technically is still running off like a launch Switch engine. It just looks so much better than than Pokemon does, like drastically. So, um, I don't know that Pokemon and, and is necessarily Xenoblade the 3. best reference, but yeah, Xenoblade Three also looks pretty good. But I know it could be much better. I just think what it comes down to is price. Like, are they willing to potentially limit their their audience, their their consumer audience by, you know, smacking a $450, $500 price on it? Well, here's here's what I'll say to Nintendo. Do you really want poor people as your audience, you know? Like, do they really deserve the next Nintendo console? I don't know that they do, you know? <laughs> Uh, can't hear can't hear you laughing. So we should tell people that you're laughing because that was a joke. Um, yeah. <laughs> people didn't understand that, that was a joke and they don't I, deserve I just, it. Now. Just make it true. Like we saw you laughing, but we didn't hear you laughing. So I just I just wanted to double check. <laughs> but also, like I don't know, like with if Nintendo Switch Online is there from the start, like you don't need to buy a game at launch, right? Like you need, and if it's like continuing your your Nintendo Online membership from from Switch, then like. Shit, man! You just bought a brand new console that plays all these games that you thought you loved so much, even better than you ever thought they could. Yeah. Right. One thing I will say, I I, I want to know. PlayStation Five did that with the PlayStation Plus program. Right? That's true. That's true. One thing I will say is, I I, I would I feel like it needs to be. I don't know. It needs to. From a controller standpoint, I'd like for it to be built uh, a little more durable. I feel like the Joy-Cons, drifting aside, okay, that's a totally separate conversation. Jeez. But those things feel so cheap when you compare them to other, you know, the the DualSense, for example, or the Xbox controller. I, I would hope we get more functional premium, I guess, controllers. Dude, the Joy-Cons are such trash yeah. that it is actually uncomfortable to hold and play a game the joy con like like it's almost unusable in my opinion like for you, me anyway like yeah it's like you I say that handle it you say that it is the perfect controller for kids 
It is. That's true. That's a good point. It is a great hey, controller for kids. No one likes kids. All right. I subscribe to a subreddit of kids falling down and laugh. Okay. There right? I don't care about those kids. <laughs> that, that's fair. That's fair. But um, it is a like having like my, my niece and nephew over, all they want to do is play Mario Kart because they could actually fit their hands on the fucking Switch controller with like the little bumper stuff up top. It was awesome. I mean, they're, they suck at Mario Kart. But um, like it was just really cool. That, like because I remember playing my first Xbox and I was back with a Duke controller and I was like, "What the fuck, you guys? Like, how am I supposed to use this thing?" Yeah, I'm supposed to play Project Gotham Racing? No, no, not like this. No, that's a good point. What is what is like the because the Nintendo Switch came out and like the PlayStation Five and Xbox Series X, like that all that shit came out pre-inflation, right? Yeah. And like they, I don't think they adjust the prices in the U.S. for inflation. I think they adjusted them in in other countries to match inflation. Right. What is the too scared? What is the highest amount dollar value that you guys would be willing to pay for a new Nintendo console? I think it depends on the the performance, kind of as we've been talking. I mean, yeah. I if it's strong, if it's really strong, if it's stronger than a Steam Deck, for example, I mean, I'd be willing to pay four fifty, five hundred. But I don't think that would be the general public. I think I, if I had to guess, it'll lie somewhere between three hundred and fifty and four hundred. I would really like Nintendo to throw everybody a curveball, and they were like, "This is like you thought this was gonna be like the family friendly, like like fun console we've been putting out for twenty years." No, this is. It's it's the size of a refrigerator, and it's eight <laughs> times more powerful than the PS5, and it's six thousand dollars. <laughs> and by the way, Grand Theft Auto Six s- Switch Two exclusive. Exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> this thing you're has, gonna pay it. You're gonna like it. This thing has enough computational know-how to hack into NORAD. Like we we we've got you covered with this bad boy. <laughs> oh my lord. Yeah. We you suckered you guys in with your Smash Brothers addiction. Hey, when, and when everyone zigs, that's when it's time to zag, you know? Like that's that, that, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess, like, there's not much interesting stuff to say about the games. There's no games announced for this thing, obviously. And uh, we're not game what developers. What are you talking about? There, we're not there game is developers. games announced for it. What is it? You're gonna get you're gonna get uh, Super Mario Brothers. You're gonna get uh, Mario Kart. Uh-huh. <laughs> you're gonna get a Zelda game for it. What are you talking about? Okay, all right, okay. Um, and like, I don't think it's interesting to be like, oh, maybe now is when you introduce GameCube, Nintendo on. Like, I I just don't think that's like a, a worthwhile conversation. But are there any hopes for for play patterns? I guess that you guys want like. Besides upgraded controllers that you guys were talking about for the, the Switch, uh, like the Joy-Cons, is there anything else you want out of a new Nintendo console? Yeah, I want like a proficient online That's what I was gonna say. ecosystem. Like, like you know, like with PlayStation and Xbox I've had for a decade or more. I don't, I don't, my time dilation is like way out of control. I have no idea how long it's been. But, Xbox has oh, had it since dude. like 2007. It's been like so, 20 years yeah. almost. <sighs> well the the playstation 4 is really the first time it started for playstation right so That's about true. a decade um we got like the chat rooms and stuff like that which we used to spend so much time in, dude so much time we used to spend in those ps4 like yep voice chat Parties. rooms yep man i can i a, a quick aside from the nintendo stuff Man, I like barely know how to use parties on my PlayStation 5. I think that shit is so confusing. Because it's like, if I start a party one time with like my buddies, Colin, Fabio, and Jamie, like that party still exists even if we like leave it. So like I'll join that party thinking they're already online, but they're not there. That was just like a previous party that had existed. And then they're in like a different party. And I'm like, but this says their names. Like, like I. Why doesn't it make more sense? Why isn't it easier to just jump well, into a party? Why isn't it easier to invite is- games? This is just what's happening, George. Like we're getting older, and these technologies are going to start confusing us. All right? Our minds, I've... our minds are functioning <laughs> a, a little lower than they used to. Man, I fucking work in tech. This is going to be a problem for me. Okay, I, 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 can't, I can't have this. By the way, Coach is here because we haven't introduced oh, hi, him from the Lone Star State, the Lone Ranger. The he's the only Texas Ranger. He's the only person in Texas right now. 
Yes. Only. <laughs> I or, saw your you boy on. Dakota Prescott throw a pick in uh, practice today, and then was it Trayvon Diggs who just immediately talked shit to him and went, you ain't yeah. shit? No, he said, shut your bitch ass up. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How how we feel about that, Coach? I feel good. You got alpha dogs just being alpha dogs, so. Yeah, that's what you want on a football yeah. team. They're bored. I mean, like, okay, you're going to play against each other for the next five to six weeks before September rolls around, you know, middle of September when football season starts, so. Yeah. Coach, we were just talking about this rumored Nintendo Switch 2. We were talking about things we wanted, things we expected. Things that we just hope to God are there, like a stable online connectivity and, and interaction with our friends. Is there anything, I think you're probably the biggest Nintendo head here. Is there anything on your on your wish list for Nintendo? Is there anything that would well, see, make I don't need, you a day I don't, one purchase for sure? I don't need the, eight, the, the high-end 4K HD because I get that with the PS5, right? Um, Nintendo's games are playing really good. On the system right now. Um, I just don't think we should get a Nintendo Switch 2 until Game Freak learns how to properly um, code. <laughs> because people think it's because the Switch doesn't have enough power, and I don't think so. Well, um, Coach, they're going to they're gonna pull a Nintendo DS situation. It doesn't matter if they release the Switch 2. They're going to release Pokemon only on the Switch like four years from now. Like they right. with, with Black and White 2 when that came out like two years Dude, after the so 3DS right, was out. Too. <laughs> Which is also in the rumors right now. So You're so Black right. Too. But um, I heard that with that rumor that it's going back to an LCD screen. Um... I'm sure it'll be difficult for people that have the OLED to go back unless they can get it at 1080p. But again, it's all about battery life, right? Look at the what? Austin finally bug. saw the Austin finally <laughs> saw the bug that went across like the lens of my camera. A bug <laughs> just like in full frame, perfect framing, just walked across George's camera. It's like a June bug or something. No, it's even it's, it's, it's it could fit on like a a. a a pin like it is such a small bug but it's like right a centimeter away from my lens so it looks fucking enormous like it's about to eat my face off i'm sorry guys i keep pushing it away but he's a very persistent little critter i mean sorry, i don't really guys. need anything i just need something that will be efficient right that will play good games you know i guess 15 years ago i would have said a lot different but now that we have the Series X and the PS5. Do we really need the Switch to so, play these? This is actually now that you're here, Coach. Yeah. By the way, it's good to see you. I love you. Good I miss to see you. you. I love you too. Um, when when did you abandon Xbox? Because I just remembered when he said you're like a Nintendo guy. I feel like I remember when we all first started podcasting. You were like the Xbox guy, right? Mm -hmm. When um, when did the transition happen? When they stopped making games that were like fun. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Like yeah. straight up, man. Like about five I mean, years like, ago. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> when the series when the Series X came out, like their whole push was, hey, we could play our old games at, you know, remastered type quality. So they just haven't put anything out that I've been happy about. I thought I would be happy about Halo, but yeah. Halo Infinite. I, you know what I was feeling when I was playing Halo Infinite? I was like this is fine, but maybe it's time to retire Halo for a while. Because I'm like, would I, would I still feel like this if Halo 4 and 5 and uh, all this like nonsense hadn't been happening for the last decade, you know? Because I feel like maybe I would have liked Infinite if I, if I hadn't been... If you had to play 4 or 5. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Or give it to a new company that's kind of like a startup company that's hungry. Like uh, what they were back in the day when when Bungie started, right? Um, I don't know. Maybe what they're just too comfortable. That what was the game that came out? Like I, it was like free to play on the PlayStation Five generation, and I think PlayStation Four. I guess it's basically Halo, except you also had like a portal gun. Oh, 
Oh, we talked about that game a lot last summer. What the Ruby heck was... game? Yeah, I was obsessed with that. That game was excellent. And then they Cliffy... shut shut the servers down. <laughs> Is it Cliffy B's game? No, no, I don't think so. Lawbringers or whatever that was? No. No, no, it wasn't. It was a shooter, and it was basically like, it looked just like Halo, except you had a portal gun, like, straight up from portal, essentially. God, what the heck was the name of that game? It sounds fun. I must you, have missed this conversation. You played uh, a ton Split of that Gate. game. Yes. Splitgate. You talked about that game a lot last year, George. I remember that. I love that. I played yeah. dozens of hours that game. I thought that game was excellent, and it felt like the Halo I wanted. Yeah. And then they were just like, didn't make money releasing that <laughs> you know, game, unfortunately. They did a really cool thing with Reach that they never explored ever again, which was making a prequel to Halo. Master Chief doesn't have to be in every damn game. All right. We don't, it doesn't have to constantly be a sequel to the last Master Chief story. Let's make more Reach style games. Let's, let's go even further back in the Spartan program. Let's, let's do some cool stuff here. Let's, let's expand our creative talent a little bit instead of just being like Master Chief sells copies. Dude, there's, there's so much going on in that world too. Like, just there's more going on than what Master Chief is doing. Like, even if you make it like, a simultaneous type game like ODST was like there is plenty of stuff going on in that world at the same time that is far more interesting I dude just got the biggest brain idea ever you're playing the next Halo game boom Normandy shows up all of a sudden we're combining the Mass Effect universe with the Halo universe there you go and guess what the flood screwed because Commander <laughs> Shepard is a much better protagonist than Master Chief Commander Shepard would have had the Commander Shepard would have had the flood beaten in about one game flat. All right, I'm sick of it. These Master Chief nonsense. I remember Austin. I think Austin and I were talking about this, but for Halo Five, who was the other like main character that was Locke? Uh, is it John John Locke? Yeah, <laughs> the most generic name of a so, cool character. But, but what was his like call? Like um, Spartan Locke, right? Yeah, it was, was Spartan it? Locke. Was it? Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So. That whole team at the beginning, like, um, they could have made a game before that to build that character up and then lead into Halo 5, right? So there's there's a lot of things that they could have done with that because, like, the lead up to 5 and then it was just the biggest letdown, I think, in all of gaming history. Like, we were imagining this these two military combatants just going at each other and it was just one little level. Well, so, so like I, I watched really quick, really quick. Jameis and Locke. John Locke is the old guy from Lost. My bad, and the philosopher, I, but whatever. Yeah, that's what I, I was. Gonna I say. watched a recent like lore breakdown of Halo because I'm like I have I don't even remember what's going on in this universe, and I'm I'm watching it and I'm I'm like being like mm. they went out of, they got out of control they lost they completely went off the rails with the, yeah. with the lore and any lore like, video starts a hundred thousand years before the events of halo and you're like i'm sorry excuse me <laughs> yeah like it, it's got a little out of control with something like mass effect that hundred thousand years was like built into the story right like it was kind of like there because the whole story is about like a cycle with with halo it's like you got like the what were they called the arbiters right or the something forerunners. like that forerunners yeah and it's like I, and there was like a, literally a civilization that predated them, and it's like, man, can, like this completely went out of control. Let's let's dial it back, and let's get back to like humanity versus an invading alien force with the original Spartans. And I think we, you got yourselves like a really cool game. So I think it's Halo Reach is the best one. I, I'm just gonna say that. I, I think that is hands down the best Halo story for sure. I think I it's the tightest. That. I think it's the tightest. I think it makes the most sense. I think it asks you to understand the least amount about the world. I'm still salty about Halo Reach because it ruined Halo multiplayer for me forever. But um, I did like. Oh, the cool! I mean, it was. I mean, it was. It was 15 years ago, so I'm glad you're over it. That's that's good. I'm not yeah. over it. <laughs> I know. I know. Also, it was 13 years ago. Sorry, I didn't mean to be a liar. That's um, what you are now, isn't it, George? You're just but a yeah, liar. But yeah, Coach. Anything else about the Switch too? <laughs> Not just, I mean, how far can you push a handheld, right? Without, you, you, without yeah. the battery. Like I know people want, 
you know, the mm, whole 4K. Well, I know they want like docked. I mean, that's fine, right? You could do that docked, but um, when you I am 99% handheld. sure my phone is more powerful than the Switch and Steam Deck, and it lasts pretty good. But now, granted, they're $1,200. My phone is $1,200, but I feel like there's a compelling case to be made that if our, we can make our phones that powerful and that the screen's that good, maybe we can do a little better with the handhelds. What kind of phone you got? Uh, an S21 Ultra. Oh, nice. iPhone 4. You, you know what I'm saying? I just feel like 3G. May, maybe... <laughs> 3G. The 3S. I can't even 3S. use 3G anymore. It got shut down. <laughs> You be, but you know what I'm saying? Like, like I feel like we could, we we could demand a little more from our handheld consoles, and everything would be okay. Well, how like, did uh, you guys might be able to answer this? But how did Xenoblade the three games or the four really because of the DLC? But how did they run on the Switch? Were there a lot of bumps? I mean, okay, go for it. Go for it, they Seth. <laughs> <laughs> they they run exceptionally well at an exceptionally low resolution. Xenoblade three is a gorgeous game like like dude so good but the resolution is so low in xenoblade 3 especially that you can you can play it and you're like this game looks like trash well even though like the art direction is phenomenal and like the actual like character models look really good but the resolution is so low dude and xenoblade 2 suffers from the same thing uh now I didn't see it as much in the definitive edition of Xenoblade One, but I think that's because it's a Wii game and yeah. it, it operating a little different. That's what I was going to say. Is three even made a lot of improvements resolution wise over two? I think they have some new like resolution software. It's still blurry, but two handheld looks bad. Like it, it really yeah. does not look good. You, it's very hard to play. I think it runs at like 360p or some like horrible, absolutely horrible resolution. Yeah. And I'm not exaggerating. It is no joke. It is like 360p that, that it runs at. And and dude, honestly, though, like it's such a shame, too, because those games would hands down be some of the most gorgeous games you've ever played if they could run at a, a decent resolution. But Imagine. they're being held back. Yeah. yeah. Imagine. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> I wonder with the Switch um, emulator how they look because they look someone, phenomenal. Yeah. <laughs> Can you I, somebody I put Tears of the Kingdom in, and it looks amazing? Uh, yeah, I also may have done that. Can Can you oh, nice. plug your your? Oh my god, I forgot what it's called. Your Steam Deck into a TV and pair a controller and just play it that way. All right, so there's ostensibly nothing separating that from the Switch at this point. My my big thing about the Switch is that, like, it's probably Nintendo's shittiest handheld, right? Like, the battery doesn't last that long. Okay, hear me out. Like, none of the games are handheld games. None of them are handheld. Like, there are console games that, like, you play on the go. And so in that regard, yeah, I'm going to call that a huge success. But, like, nothing about them feels... <laughs> handheldy right so like you get to play a console quality game for on my switch like i have a not a launch switch but i got it later in the year but like i get like four hours out of it and then it's it's done so you know like the battery is just fried whereas like with a 3ds i feel like i was getting 10 to 12 and granted the games were designed differently and i actually i've spent a lot of my life playing handheld games and really like the the nature of them compared to console games and that's something we talked about at the beginning where i was revisiting logan shadow from psp right and how like those games just don't work and so like i think it's an underpowered home console i think it's probably an overpowered over-designed handheld console and so i'm just like what does the switch do exceptionally well besides be pretty good at two things you know what like i have this weird thing with the switch and i don't think it's the switch i think it's me um because I nailed it, I nailed down, I nailed down the feeling that I got from the Switch last night when I was playing my Steam Deck on my break at work, and it is crippling anxiety. I can't play these systems in public, and I think it's because I can't relax. Like there, I, I can, I can play a game in my home when I'm chilling, like in, like in this my game room or on the couch or something like that. I can relax and play a game. But I'm always constantly aware of like other things going on around me when I'm trying to play a game. And I feel like I can't focus on the game because I have such crippling anxiety about playing the game. 
and it's a weird thing and i've always wondered why i don't like playing my switch i can play my switch if i have it docked and i can play if that's how i played xenoblade 2 and it's how i played xenoblade 3 i cannot play the switch in public away from home portable i can play my steam deck you know sitting on the couch just the st- it's not the actual like console itself it's when i try to play it away from home and that's weird right maybe i need to see a therapist where, where would you where would you play it outside of your home work like i said i'm on my break or something like okay. that or um Tra- traveling yeah. yeah it's just okay the, um really quick every everyone should see a therapist therapy is great I have a therapist. It's excellent. If, it, if you have the right therapist, you got to have the right therapist, though. Oh, yeah. yeah it had, sounds I've like had... Seth needs to talk to Miyamoto. That's what I, I went heard. through a couple. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Moto. Is um, Miyamoto dead? Is he the dead one? No. No. That's, that's Gunpei, Gunpei Yokai, right? You might be thinking of Iwata. Iwata. That's what yeah. I'm thinking of. Um, I wanted to say quickly we got a comment here from the free man 627. Thanks for listening. He said, or he or she says, the. A uh, new Switch needs to have more powerful hardware, especially when the Steam Deck is on the market. And, I, you know, we've been dancing around the Steam Deck and the Switch. We've kind of been comparing the two. Do we think that, like, I don't know, does does the whole power conversation really need to be uh, at the forefront of their mind, especially now with the Steam Deck on the market? That's not a specific question we've we've talked about. So here's here's what I'll say. I love my steam deck to pieces i think it is absolutely a slap in the face to nintendo that fans created an emulator that can run nintendo games better on the steam deck than their own console i think if i was nintendo i would be disgusted by that and at a pretty similar price point you can get a steam deck for 450 dollars. so if i'm nintendo i'm saying like we're going to make a new console and it's going to be more powerful than the steam deck because that's disgusting. That that's just how I would feel about it. But I also think the steam deck is <clears throat> in hardware wise, a, a great threat to the switch because it does everything. The switch does except for the Nintendo exclusive games, right? Which they ha- currently have via emulation. If you really want to play, Nintendo games, it's the Switch games, you can play it on a Steam Deck. Is it legal? No. But you can do it. So, um, th- that's there. And Is it legal? No, neither is cocaine. People do that too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I would say that, like, for the first time, Nintendo has a real competitor with the Steam Deck. Um, and is it going to be as popular as the, the Switch? No. But that's because Nintendo has such a, you know, a mind share in the general public and the steam deck isn't really well known. I don't think besides the, the hardcore gamers, but I will say the steam deck is probably the most impressive piece of hardware I've bought in the last 10 years. And the, that thing is so good, man. And, and it's so fun to tinker with. And it's so fun to just like <clears throat> pick up your games and go. I do. I didn't even consider the fact that I could play final fantasy 14 on the go until the other night. And I was like, I was like flabbergasted at how well it worked. And I'm like, God, this this is what I've been missing in my life all these years. Now, granted, I also realized that I can't play it on the go because of my crippling anxiety, but I mean, that's a different discussion. Sure, yeah. Uh, that's for you and your therapist, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting dilemma because I think, I mean, you're right, Seth. Like, it's, I'm sure from a Nintendo standpoint, they're like, man, we've got to have a strong system. At the same time, just to be fair here, I mean, the Switch is six years old and the Steam Deck just came out, was it last year? So, I mean... Years ago, I think. Yeah, I, I mean, so I, I, I'm not surprised the Steam Deck is like considerably stronger, but you listen, like, like just just to wrap up the. Sorry, yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah, also, yeah, just to wrap fine. this up, I recommend the Steam Deck to everybody. If you guys are on the fence about it at all, buy the Steam Deck. It's so good. Yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Um, though, and I just wanted to to throw out some numbers because you're right. Like, I I don't think the Steam Deck will ever be anywhere remotely as popular as the Switch. And just I looked it up because I I didn't know anything about Steam Deck sales numbers. I don't know how trustworthy this site is, VG charts, but this is the only article I'd find I, I was able to find that claims that um, the Steam Deck is expected to surpass three million units sold this year, and this was an, an article from April. 
Uh, of course, I think like that's pretty good. Yeah, and for PC related hardware, that's pretty good. But just that to... they're 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 made to order, right? I think so. They they were. I know you can buy them like directly off of the Steam store as of like two okay. months ago. Just to be fair, though, the Switch has sold 125 million. So I don't I don't think they're really competitors. I I do think it's something they need to look at though, as far as you know, that's still three million people that maybe bought a Steam Deck because they think the Switch is not strong enough for them. Well, so I think, I don't think it's a problem. Because obviously, they sold 125 million. The Steam Deck's never going to yeah. breach that. I think it could be a problem, though, if the narrative starts going around, why would I buy the Switch 2 right. when the Steam Deck can emulate it and it can emulate it better right. than the, the native console. And if that, if that narrative catches on, mm -hmm. they're going to have an issue. Yeah, I don't disagree. Well, soccer mom down the street who I think is a majority of, you know, of course, gamers are buying it, but parents, they're going to, you know, yeah. do you see a Steam Deck at GameStop or a Target? And I think that's the reason um, why you're at 3 million. I, I think know. you could only buy it online, right? Through, I, I think so. I could be wrong. Valve. But they also remember too, yeah, but Valve, they all, their, um, their VR headset is, I think, head and shoulders above what the uh, Oculus is. But of course, Oculus is sells a lot more. But right, yeah, more than the was it HTC Vive? Yeah. Is that yeah? But it's because of the price point, and it's you can just go yeah. in and grab it at the store, and you don't need a PC, and it's kind of interesting. So I think that's the same. That's the exact same as Switch, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, I I think it needs to be stronger. I it would be nice for it to be as strong as the Steam Deck at least but i know they're gonna go for portability that would be my only concern i guess i've never seen a steam deck in person seth is it like much thicker than a switch because it looks like it just from photos but i don't oh, know yeah, dude she okay. she thick that's yeah. the only thing i'm like eh, i don't know if nintendo would rock with that Game it's almost size. it's almost not even portable yeah <laughs> it's <Game> gear. <laughs> do you remember the sega game gear like, a bunch yeah, of teachers gonna, brought theirs last year. Let me go work. grab it with the case. I'll be right back. Yeah. Okay. So a bunch of teachers last year, once we got through all Never the mind. stage I exams, my dog's going to see me. He's going to freak out. <laughs> a bunch of people brought their um, Steam decks. So Nice. But they look pretty cool. I mean, good tech. You know. But going it's back to... It's not going to gonna matter when the Nintendo re releases the Nintendo fridge. <laughs> the Nintendo fridge. So if you remember at the beginning of the life cycle of the here. Switch, they were able to play... Um, like Doom, both Dooms came out. Mm -hmm. um, so there were third-party games at the time, but of course, any third-party games coming out now, like of course, like the, like the new Assassin's Creed, I don't even think that'll be even. They'll attempt to put that on there, right? No. But next year or the year after, whenever we get the Switch, the next one, it might be able to play the lowering games that are coming out right now. It's just the the download size that's the only thing that's the biggest thing sorry coach i feel bad because you missed the joke earlier before you arrived i said what if nintendo subverted all our expectations by making a refrigerator sized console eight times the, the strength of the ps5 and it was six thousand dollars um i thought that would be pretty cool we'll call it something like the end box they're like we're gonna take microsoft down um it's I, not as funny when i repeat the joke but yeah it's not uh yeah, you had <laughs> I will say, too, you know, the other thing we haven't brought up here, I know there was a leak mm, maybe a year or two ago that claimed the next Switch system or next Nintendo system would use DLSS, which the PS5 and Series X do not use. So I'd be curious to know what they attempt to do with that as well. Um, I know that that AI software is actually pretty good as far as up resing, um, you know, lower resolution games into high resolution games. And so maybe that somehow comes into play as far as releasing something PS4 strength, but through DLSS, they, you know, try and put on some PS5 and Series X um, quality games on it. Before that, we run... Great, great for smaller studios too, sorry, yes. right? Like just so, just so I understand the technology, like you could have a smaller staff and you could have, I, I guess, worse art direction <laughs> probably not art direction but you can have smaller staff like a less capable staff and then with that technology you'd be able to have a more polished game right um, before i think so oh, sorry I, I... no go Jesus ahead Christ. no go Seth, ahead. i remember my first podcast um, i know i don't funny. know what's going on um i say before we run too long yeah 
considering we all met through a PlayStation Vita group, yeah. I wanted to know how we felt about Sony's new handheld possibly playing Vita and PSP games. If it does, does the Vita live on? Does the Vita live on? If it if it does, I'm there. Like even if it's just like if I could just download if uh, if I can play any kind of games not reliant on an internet connection, I'm there. If I can pop trophies on the go and if I can download, I don't even know like what 500 gigabytes worth. Like what what could they fit on a card? If I could download like that many, like shit, I can play like all the Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster games on the go on that thing. Like yes, I'm I'm there day one. But I I doubt. I think it's just gonna be like the whatever the Logitech shit is. I, I feel like it can't, but yeah. I thought it was really, I thought it was really cool because like there's so many cool games that are trapped on PSP, man. Like uh, the City of Zero One Two, that's a great game, trapped on, um, the the PSP. And they, the Square Enix has shown no desire to ever take it elsewhere. Um, but I would love I would love to see that. I think it'd be pretty cool. And I mean. I was gonna say dang and rap, but those games all got released on PS4. So, yeah. but don't you guys still have your PS Vita? I have a Vita TV. Okay, like, and the, the shop's still open. Well, it's yeah. just, it's 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 cool. It's a, it's a, it's almost like a Vita too. You know, it's it's why why are you coming at me like this, Coach? I, you know, I, I'm 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 feeling very vulnerable and attacked right now. And, Only because and, we have no nothing of it, and it looks it kind of looks funny. So I think it'd be interesting. I'm just playing, buddy. I'm, I think it'd be interesting if it's able to play those, but uh, I'm not really putting money on it, to be honest with you. I think it's going to be just a streaming box. That's my gut feeling. But. So here's here's something that I've noticed, though, um, <clears throat> just internally testing it in my house. PlayStation's um, native remote play works way, way better than remote playing over your phone or over your computer and i'm wondering if they like give some sort of priority in the network to that that kind of thing um but when i'm remote playing from my ps4 or from my ps5 to my ps4 there is almost no lag like i played through a lot of final fantasy 16 which is an action game that way and almost no lag when i would connect it to my phone it wouldn't work hardly at all Hmm. so i don't know what that's about interesting but also i can kind of see them killing the remote play app on the phones just to be just to be dicks about about the new console because they want to sell it is that supposed to come out this year did they say that it should probably come out whenever they want i mean they have they probably have all the stuff it, it's just a dual sense cut in half with an lcd screen in it you know yeah i don't know it'll be interesting if it's just a streaming box i'm not gonna buy it but if it's just a streaming box, I'll buy it for less than one hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, yeah. But they gotta give me a reason to buy it. Mm -hmm. Right now, I can. I got my phone. And I can hook those controllers up to my phone, and I can I can play whatever PS Five game I want on my on you know five G. So it's like, what do you what do you what are you doing this for? Unless you just got excess components you're trying to get rid of. But the Vita game and PSP game thing, I thought was a pretty cool selling point, which is why I believed it. George looks disgusted. No, I like that would that would be great. Like I love the PSP games that have been coming out on console, even though, like I said, like, man, these were like really made for <laughs> for a handheld. They don't play super awesome with the dual shock. But like, no, like I said, like you said, we all met in a Vita PlayStation group. That was how we first met. That was what, eleven years ago? Ten years ago? Don't say that. Don't say that. I'm no, 21. I'm going to. No, I'm, 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 I'm 22 still. On the on those gray hairs, Cabron, he got this. Um, I'm actually not getting gray hairs. I'm balding, which is worse. Oh, wait a minute, like, wait, a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on, hold on, Coach. So it's is your it time to shine. PS, PS, is it that PS Vita group where that guy showed a picture of Seth, me, and Austin, and uh, Greg, and put gay. Is that the I same don't remember Vita group? this. It is. It is. We were talking about something. I don't remember we, were, this. we were responding to something, and it was just like a normal oh, conversation. Dude. And the guy just like made a meme of us and responded it as his comment. I don't remember that. It was just because he was mad. With Greg, bro. Yeah. Oh man. Oh, I'm still. About that. I'm still an admin of that group, and like once every six months, I'll get a, a request to join the group. 
I left that group. I should post it. Just, so just to see, just to see what's going on. All right. I would think we've run game, out of. Would you guys Sorry. rather game back in like 13 years ago in the middle of the PS3 days or now? Uh, 13 years ago, dude. Things were so creative and fun back then. Think of all like the, oh, like dude. not everything was great. Not everything was a triple A banger, dude. But like things were so fun and fresh and creative. And now we've all fallen slave to the corporate overlords where everything is like it was financially driven back then too but there was still like that creative love in video game design and nowadays it's like here's assassin's creed 15 we've made no changes except for the setting and you're gonna buy it because you hate yourself and you want something you to do with do. your free time yeah i don't think microtransactions were around then were they yeah. they were starting they were starting it was the loot boxes that weren't around that cancer hadn't showed up yet but we online, really had passes, uh, online passes seem pretty fucking sweet now though don't they <laughs> yeah they do <laughs> oh yeah, just buy the, game say, new, other or, buy the game new or spend 10 bucks and you, you'll just get like a full game with no no microtransactions um, i love buying the game dude. throwing it in and playing it man like, i love that I era of gaming dude like dude, think yeah. of how cool infamous was infamous was so cool kill zone resistance these were like statement tentpole playstation franchises that they were like we don't it's, need these anymore. Uh, here, here's the deal. Here's the deal, though. It's the same thing with everything else in your life. Like, it's not that it was better then. It's just that you cared more <laughs> then. I feel like I care a lot fucking right now, George. I'm no, pretty mad don't. about it. How many hundreds of hours have you put into one game franchise? Easy. Take it easy. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, like, it's, it's one like of those. That. Well, no, but it's the same thing with me. Like, I just don't care about games the way I used to. 10 years ago i just i can't you know i got three dogs got a girlfriend like i'm busy man i got a house i'm trying to fix up i got two and a half jobs say, like i'm I'm busy pedro man pedro has beaten me over and over again in video game races and it's starting to disgust me and i don't know what to do about it because i feel like i really tried hard to, to play final fantasy Give 16 up. at every second Dude, this guy, we were we were we were racing through the Kaseki series and I pulled ahead one time. I go on vacation for two weeks and he decided to not sleep and beat two Kaseki games in that week. And I could never I could I'll never I'll never be able to catch up now. He's just he's too competitive. I can't beat him. And Final Fantasy 16, he beat in like a week. I have other things to do. So does he. I don't know how he does it. And it does get worse because I remember when I was in college, I would box up my NES, put it in the uh, in the closet, and not touch it during till like Christmas. There it is. Oh my gosh! I found it. I had a screenshot. I knew I did somewhere. Oh my god! There, there's my comment. I wonder if he realizes these aren't fanboy arguments, but arguments against his stupidity. <laughs> I wonder if I can pull this up on the screen. There's gotta be a way. Akira Inugami. Let's see. Hold on. I gotta pull this up for those who are listening. Sorry. <laughs> Dude, that is so funny. Coach, you haven't aged a day. Look at you. Thank you haven't aged a you haven't aged a day. You look phenomenal still. Austin looks like a completely different person. I feel like I look better <laughs> than I did. Did your nuts drop yet by then? Yeah, Austin. Awesome. How old are you? How old awesome? no, Austin, Austin? How old are you in that like, photo? Uh I was eighteen. 15? I was eighteen. Yeah, God, you look like a turtle that wished to be a person in that photo. <laughs> and now you, just look, you don't... now you just now you just look like a handsome ass person. Look at you now, Thank kid. You. you did it. Thank you. You look nothing like that person. Like no, I totally that changed. person. Like even your facial structure is completely different. I I don't know who that person is. <laughs> well, That's it's wrong. it's because I, I I did change a lot. Like obviously my hairstyle has drastically changed, but also. Um, I lost like after that in college, I lost like sixty pounds, so I like lost a considerable amount of weight. So I just changed. <laughs> How much do you weigh now? Uh, one fifty five. Oh, so you lost yeah, like a real UFC lightweight? <laughs> yeah. So, wait, sorry, you lost about a third of your body weight. <laughs> yeah, I was like two ten probably in that photo. Jeez, Louis, good for you, man. That's what I'm trying to. Oh, that, that, that's why I'm walking every day, man. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to lose sixty. Never get comfortable, Austin, because I gained seventy pounds in the last. Oh, time. I know, I, I know. Was... Well, damn, I didn't know I looked that bad. <laughs> no, no, not you. I said, 
God damn it. Oh, I know you did, Seth. <laughs> you look terrible. <laughs> God, you look like you ate high school, Seth. <laughs> no, I'm just... I'm just I've... playing Austin. I know you didn't hear no. that. I, I that's, was, what my friends, time, that's what my friends said about me in college. It was infuriating. Because like, I would show them pic pictures of me in high gaming. school. I agree, Coach. I, I, think, I think back then, legitimately different that things were much... The gaming was just in a better spot. <clears throat> No, like when releases, like we still got excited. I mean, I'm excited for Spider Man, but I'm not like, you know, not like how it was before. Like, um, any big release. Yeah, I'm about to those days. like show up to Sony headquarters and just like start smacking people around and be like, "Give me resistance, or I'm gonna lose it." Yeah, I'll start picking. Just, you might as well go on and lose it then. Actually. You want to just lose it now? Who they keep it? teasing it. Was that, um, who did that one? Um, Insomniac. Yeah. Insomniac. Or was that? No, that was Sucker Punch. Or was it yeah. the other one? Yeah. No, no Resistance. Was Insomniac it was Insomniac. Was it? Yeah. Oh, he said. Oh, you what said Resistance. I thought you said it. Infamous. Yeah, it was. It, well, I said Infamous earlier, but okay. uh, yeah, it was really jarring because Insomniac's logo doesn't fit with the theme of that game whatsoever. So he boot up Resistance, and it's like this horrific shooter. And Insomniac's like fun bubble letter logo pops up. Infamous right. was, was even, just as good, if not better. Cool, cool and thing. even the generation before that on the PS2, Xbox, and GameCube, like you still had companies like trying to break out. Like I know um, uh, Jack and Daxter, right? They started their new series. Naughty Dog started that new series. And then you had. Um, Insomniacs, what was theirs? Um, Ratchet and Clank. Yeah, Ratchet and Clank. You know, you had all these new IPs coming out during that time, and it was like, it was exciting. It was exciting, but there were, I mean, I don't like the PS2 generation because there was like a one in three chance that the game you bought was going to be hot trash. And you just had no, you were, there's no way you could prepare for it. Like, there was a lot of bad games in that generation. Like I remember buying that Batman game on Xbox. I think it was just called Batman. What was the What was the Batman game that came out before? Um, it was before Avengers, there was, I think. There was Batman Begins, then there was a Batman based on the animated series, and there was Rise of Sun Tzu. Yeah, Batman and Dark Xbox. Dark Shadows, Dark Tomorrow. Oh, Dark Tomorrow sounds right. It was really bad. That game was awful. Yeah. And but the cover looks so cool, man. And like the previews look so cool. I, I had that. Uh, I had a, uh, I had a uh, Xbox magazine, I think. They used to send the demo discs in. Mm. Mm. Good old day. Batman Vengeance is the one based off Batman the Animated Series, and that one's actually pretty good. All right, guys. I think we've run out of meaningful things to say about what we want out of a Switch 2 since we just started reminiscing about 10 years ago, and I can't stop staring. I want to make this photo my background on my computer. This is amazing. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> that was the year Greg snuck up on me, not realizing that like I almost punched him in the head. I almost punched Greg because he saw you had the, his shirt on, right? And then he like yeah, and he he yeah. ducked down into the crowd and popped up right in my face and like scared the <laughs> shit out of me, dude. Because I'm already on you're already on edge, right? Like you got a bunch of people around. I'm in a city I don't know. I'm not from the city. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a you know a, a I'm from like the middle of the mountains. So I'm, I'm like Ed, a, a little, little scazzed out, and also yeah. yeah, he scares the crap out of me. Almost catches a karate right fist in the head, and then I would, I would be the guy. Who, oh my god, then I would be the guy who punched Greg Miller. I almost I mean, wish that would have happened. Res respectfully, in that photo, you look like the only thing you were punching was like another ticket to the buffet. You've lost so much weight, man. I cannot believe that's the same person. Uh I think it was. I think it was. I don't know. I think I'm just built differently now because I've definitely I'm definitely heavier than I was like weight wise back then, but I think I started Very hitting better. the gym a lot. Yeah, I, I hit, started hitting the gym a lot, and also I just I think I don't know what's going on in that photo. Also, that facial hair is awful. Respectfully, the beard is so much better than whatever fucking bull horns you got rocking on your. Who took the picture, Elijah? Oh, I don't I think even Colin, know. We already took that picture. Colin wasn't there. Colin was there. I I was at that right. PAX because that was that was the one we hung out at, right? It was. You know what? It was ninety nine percent sure was Colin was he there. wasn't. 
I he think that was they didn't do beyond. I think that was Blake they did, uh, that took that photo. Okay. I'm pretty sure. I don't think me it and was... Elijah have a really me and Elijah have a really good lost photo with Colin. And I've never seen it. But I specifically remember Colin goes, That's a good one. I know. I can tell. <laughs> and I've always wanted to see it to see if he was right or not. But Elijah's never given it to me. <laughs> now we barely ever talk, so well, this well, has been a fun note, podcast. Yeah, on that, on that <laughs> note, um, thank you so much for listening to episode 129 of Frameskip, a video game podcast. Um, you can reach us all on Twitter at Frameskip Pod. Please submit questions to the show there. I believe we're also Frameskip Pod on other services like Insta- Instagram. Instagram, Instagram, Facebook. I guess that's it. Cool. Yeah. Um, Hit us up there. Be, just if you got questions, you got comments, you got concerns, let us know. You can find Austin at Austin J. Eller uh, on Twitter. You can find Seth at Seth the Nineties Kid. Don't follow him. You can find Coach fucking nowhere. He's off the grid, baby. He's goes protocol. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Shortbox Summary. That's the the comic book podcast I do. Uh, taking a little hiatus, coming back in a few weeks. Very excited. Uh, th- thank you for listening. If you made it this far. D- that's great. You know how to find us. It's a big internet. And you, look at that. You found us. So please tell your friends who you like that you think would like this show about us. That would be fucking dope. That would be amazing. Do that. Spread the word. Anything else, guys? That's it. Cool, cool. I'm I'm going to go pee. So I think this seems like as good a time as any to, to end the recording. Okay. Goodbye. Love you guys. I love that picture. Yeah. Some, some-